as we are familiar that our earth is getting warmer day by day and the several disasters are increasing in frequencies with intensities on this planet floods droughts cyclones snow avalanches and heat avalanches are common nowadays there is a huge climate variability which creates the extreme events on the earth all these disasters are the result of the global warming hello everybody i heartily welcome all of you to join our today's lesson about global warming before discussing the global warming we will discuss about the learning objectives of today's class on completion of this topic learners will be able to define global warming list out the factors responsible for global warming state positive and negative impact of global warming state the indian government interventions towards global climatic change list the international initiatives for mitigating global climatic change the atmosphere is just like a blanket of the earth which protect us from excess heat and cold but due to emission of greenhouse gases in the atmosphere our earth is getting warmer these greenhouse gases act like a glass house which allows the light energy to come in but traps the heat energy keeping the inside temperatures of the glass house warmer than the outside temperature greenhouse gases in the atmosphere behave like the glass panes in the greenhouse sunlight enters the earth's atmosphere passing through the blanket of greenhouse gases as it reaches on the earth's surface land water and biosphere absorb the sunlight energy once absorbed this energy is sent back into the atmosphere some of the energy passes back into the space but much of it remains trapped in the atmosphere by the greenhouse gases causing our world to heat up as we know human activities are increasing day by day such as burning of fossil fuel releases the carbon dioxide methane and other greenhouse gases into the atmosphere these greenhouse gases form a blanket around the earth trapping heat and raising temperature on the ground this has been steadily changing our climate ehi karan hai ki saadi dharti din ba din garam ho rahi hai isi nu hi global warming de roop vich janya janda hai global warming di paribhasha is tarah ditti ja sakdi hai a gradual increase in the earth's average ground and atmospheric temperature across the whole planet is known as global warming sari dharti utte vayumandal vich तापमान के लगातार वादे को विश्वव्यापी गर्माहट के नाल जाने जाता है गर्म धरती करके मीह की तीव्रता में परिवर्तन हों है सी लैवल में वाधा हों पौधे वाइल्ड लाइफ के मनुखा उ प्रभाव पैदा है एज वी नो दैट पॉपुलेशन बूम इज द मेन कॉज ऑफ मोस्ट ऑफ द प्रॉब्लम एंड हाइपर इंडस्ट्रियलाइजेशन अर्बनाइजेशन एंड डिवेलपमेंट प्रोसैस पुट्स द ऑयल ऑन द फायर so these processes create a lot of pollution and pollution is the main cause of global warming now we will discuss the factors responsible for global warming there are several gases or we can say all greenhouse gases are responsible for global warming such as carbon monoxide carbon dioxide sulfur dioxide nitrous oxide methane suspended particulate matter Chloro fluoro carbons students i hope you all know about the major sources of these gases okay we will discuss one by one first we take the carbon monoxide carbon monoxide is mainly produced due to incomplete combustion of fuels in industries vehicles kitchens etc the other source is metallurgical operations cigarette smoke etc it accounts for 50% of total air pollution 
carbon dioxide is released due to combustion of fuels in homes factories it is also produced during the process of respiration and volcanic eruptions it is also increased due to deforestation burning of fuels and release the carbon dioxide from the oceans sulfur dioxide is mainly produced due to burning of coal with sulfur ore smelters volcanic eruption industries vehicular pollution forest fire and oil refineries also produces sulfur dioxide nitrous oxide is produced due to combustion process of fossil fuels at high temperatures in industries vehicles nitrogen fertilizer plants it is responsible for formation of photochemical smog methane is mainly produced by rice fields swamps and marshy lands municipal landfill sites and the microbial activity on sewage and sludge also produce methane gas suspended particulate matters are formed due to soot or smoke on burning of coal suspended particulate matter increases during vehicular movement building construction cement production and stone crushing chlorofluorocarbons are basically released from the refrigerators aerosol sprays perfumes they are also generated during the foam plastic for making disposable fast food containers do you know carbon dioxide is the major contributor as greenhouse gas carbon dioxide gas contributes 60% in global warming while methane gas contributes for 20% in global warming chlorofluorocarbons are responsible for 14% while nitrous oxide contributes 6% in global warming overall all greenhouse gases are responsible for global warming i hope you all agree with me when i say this fact that we human beings are mainly responsible for these greenhouse gases there are many activities which directly or indirectly enhance the release of these greenhouse gases in air and this cause air pollution let's see how air pollutants are also responsible for global warming because they can easily trap heat from these pollutants dust particles play a vital role to trap the heat forest fire is also responsible for the emission of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere during volcanic eruption several gases come out and add several gaseous nutrients in the atmosphere it also creates pollution deforestation is another significant source of greenhouse gases because fewer trees mean less carbon dioxide conversion to oxygen this is an interesting fact that during the last 150 years the concentration of carbon dioxide has increased by 31% due to industrialization and methane has risen by 151% in the atmosphere due to paddy cultivation and other agricultural activities i hope now you are clear about the causes of global warming let's discuss about the positive impacts of global warming agricultural yields will be increased because carbon dioxide will help to grow plants more rapidly global warming will provide sufficient water for agriculture because due to melting of glaciers the amount of water in the river will be more and that water is available for utilization for various purposes melting arctic ice may open the northwest passage in summer which would cut 9000 kilometers from shipping routes between europe and asia butterflies birds and plants enhance their habitat towards the polar regions antarctic hair grass will increase and provide fodder for polar animals freshwater fisheries will increase 
and provide sufficient food security in polar regions. Tourism will increase in the polar regions because melting snow and glaciers will provide lot of water to springs which attract the tourists. It will increase the potentiality of hydroelectricity because melting of snow and glaciers will provide lot of water to rivers and if we construct dams on it, so it will provide lot of hydroelectricity which is a clean fuel. It will improve the ecosystem's productivity because trees and plants will grow rapidly due to sufficient amount of water and carbon dioxide in atmosphere. And forests can grow in polar and cold desert areas because of availability of rainfall in polar regions. Let us recapitulate the positive effects. Agriculture yield will increase. Species enhance their habitat towards the polar areas. Availability of water will increase the potentiality of hydroelectricity. It will improve the ecosystem's productivity. It will open the passages in ice-capped or polar areas. Economic activities will increase in polar regions. I hope now you're clear about the positive impact of the global warming. As you know, each coin has two faces. So if there are some positive impacts of global warming, so it is obvious that there are some negative effects of the global warming. Let us discuss about the negative impacts of global warming. Firstly, we will discuss about the impact of global warming on agriculture. Climate change will affect agricultural yield directly because of alterations in temperature and rainfall and indirectly through changes in soil quality, pests and diseases. India's annual monsoon rains may even cease altogether. A warmer climate will change the rainfall pattern that will result in floods and droughts. Water cycle will get disrupted, destroying ecological systems, agriculture, power generation and human health, etc. Intensity and the frequencies of storms and cyclones will increase very rapidly. North America will be warmer and drier while North and East Africa, Middle East India, West Asia and Mexico will be warmer and wetter. So we can say global warming will increase the frequencies of disasters. It may create the hazardous situation. It will increase the frequency of heat waves in equatorial regions and the events of cold wave will increase in the temperate regions. It will obviously increase the flood type situations in the plain areas. It will also increase the sea level. So let's explore the impact of global warming on the sea level. Impact on sea level. The heating of oceans and melting of glaciers and polar ice sheets is predicted to raise the average sea level by about a half a meter over the next century. Sea level rise could have a number of physical impacts on coastal areas. A rise in the sea level by 15 to 90 centimeters will threaten about 92 million people with floods. About 6,000 kilometers of India's coastline is directly threatened by a rise in the sea level. Most of the coastal towns like Kolkata, Bombay in India and many other coastal towns round the globe will be submerged in water. Do you know the World Health Organization estimated that around 1,50,000 deaths annually are caused by climate change from which half are from the Asia-Pacific region. This climatic change mainly occurs due to the deforestation. As we know, human activities are mainly responsible for deforestation. But several times, forests are wiped out itself in the form of forest fire. Let's explore more about it. Impact on forest and wildlife. One third of the global forest might be swept away due to forest fire. Ecosystems sustain the Earth's 
entire storehouse of species and genetic diversity. Plants and animals in the natural environment are very sensitive to change in climate. Many of the species are on risk in Arctic and Antarctic regions such as polar bears and emperor penguins. Over 50% of animal and plant species would be wiped out. Deserts are likely to increase. After the forest and wildlife, let's know the impact of climatic variability on human health. Due to increase in temperature, more area will come under tropical, hot and humid climate. This will help in spread of many tropical diseases in other parts of the world. Let's explore more about the impact of climatic variability on human health. Impact on health. Higher air temperature also increases the concentration of pollution at ground level. In the lower atmosphere, air pollutants are very harmful. It damages lung tissues and causes problems for people. It directly blocks the arteries and veins which supply oxygen to the blood. Due to absence of oxygen, firstly it causes asthma and after that it is converted into lung diseases or lung cancer. So, overall concentration of the pollutant in the lower atmosphere is highly harmful to us. Furthermore, rise in temperature, increased ultraviolet radiation and pollutants all suppress disease-fighting immune system in human and animals. Overall, this will also increase spread of many diseases. Impact on environment As the climate grows warmer, oceans will become warmer and henceforth evaporation will also increase. Evaporation rate will increase even on the earth. Evapotranspiration from the trees will increase. Evaporation process makes more clouds. This will cause heavier precipitation in the entire region in the form of rainfall, snow, hail, etc. with more soil erosion. This erosion will be highly vulnerable for tropical areas and it will lead to desertification. Mediterranean region will experience decreased rainfall and an increased risk of drought which increase the vulnerability of forest fire. The loss of glaciers not only causes landslides, flash floods and glacial lakes directly but it also increases amount of water flow in rivers. Overflow of water is responsible for floods and floods are responsible for erosion and landslides and landslides are responsible for human and economic loss. The world's oceans soak up much of the carbon dioxide produced by living organisms, either as dissolved gases or in the skeletons of tiny marine creatures that fall to the bottom to become chalk or limestone. Oceans absorb about one ton of carbon dioxide per day. Impact in urban areas Roads, airport runways, railway lines, water lines, sewer lines and pipelines may require more maintenance and renewal because of greater temperature variation. It may buckle roads, sink foundations and severely crack runways. Do you know the polar ice cap has been shrinking by 10% per decade since 1980 due to global warming. Khumbu Glacier near Mount Everest has retreated over 5 kilometers since 1953. During past 40 years, 25% glacial ice is reduced in Tain Shan Mountains of China. During 1999, in Venezuela, heaviest rainfall is recorded in last 100 years, which kills about 30,000 people. Overall, we can say that global warming increases the vulnerabilities of disasters, either in the form of flash floods or severe droughts. This was about the impacts of global warming. 
Now we will discuss about the Indian government interventions towards the global climatic change. First we will discuss about the steps taken to reduce the vehicular pollution. As we know the vehicular emission is responsible for more than 70% of pollution. So the Indian government applies the euro or we can say Bharat norms. Do you know about the norms? Okay, I will explain you. Since the year 2000, India started adopting European emission and fuel regulations for four-wheeled light duty and heavy duty vehicles. Euro 1 is effective from April 2000, while Euro 2 is being applied from April 2003 throughout the country. Euro 3 or we can say Bharat Stage 3 is also applied from April 2005 nationwide, while Euro 4 will be applicable from April 2010 nationwide to reduce the pollution level in the country. Environment Protection Act the main objective of this act is to provide the protection and improvement of environment in which water, air, land, human being, other living creatures, plants, microorganisms are included. There is a constitutional provision also for environment protection. It specifies that the state is responsible to protect and improve the environment and to safeguard the forest and wildlife of the country and every citizen shall protect the environment. The Central Pollution Control Board CPCB was established in September 1974. It serves as a field formation and provides technical services to the Ministry of Environment and Forest about the provisions of the Environment Protection Act 1986. Main objectives of CPCB are to promote cleanliness of streams and wells in different areas of the states by prevention, control and abatement of water pollution. To improve the quality of air and to prevent or control air pollution in the country. State Pollution Control Board is responsible for making general policies relating to enforcement of the Central Pollution Control Board acts and rules and it also carries out general administration and coordination with other agencies. Let us know about the international efforts to reduce the global warming. There are several conferences, summits and protocols which are organized from time to time to reduce global warming and few of them are Montreal Protocol. Montreal Protocol was held in Montreal city of Canada in 1987. It is a landmark international agreement to protect the stratospheric ozone by agreeing to limit the production and use of ozone depleting substances, phasing out of ozone depleting substances and helping the developing countries to implement use of alternatives to CFCs. Till date, more than 175 countries have signed the Montreal Protocol. Let us know about the another summit. Rio summit is also known as Earth Summit. It was held in Rio de Janeiro of Brazil from 3rd June to 14th June 1992. In this conference, 172 countries and 2,400 representatives of non-governmental organizations attended this conference. Major outcome of this summit is that the countries are agreeable to the following. Reduce the greenhouse gas emission. Use alternative source of energy to replace the use of fossil fuel. Increase infrastructure and improve public transportation systems in order to reduce vehicle emissions, congestion in cities and the health problems caused by polluted air and smog. Now come to another protocol. Kyoto Protocol the Kyoto Protocol was held in Kyoto, Japan in December 1997. The objective of this protocol was to reduce greenhouse gases emission in atmosphere and achieve stabilization of greenhouse gas concentrations in the atmosphere at a level that would prevent dangerous anthropogenic interference 
with the climate system. This protocol requires countries to take appropriate measures to reduce greenhouse gas emission. Let us know about another summit. This is also known as Earth Summit 2002. It took place in Johannesburg, South Africa. In this summit, heads of state and government, national delegates and leaders and other major groups participated at mass level. It was held 10 years after the first Earth Summit in Rio de Janeiro. Therefore, it was also informally nicknamed Rio Plus 10. It focuses towards the difficult challenges such as community participation and stabilization of the population growth. How to meet our ever-increasing demands of food, water, shelter, energy and economic security. Now we should know what we can do at our end because government can't succeed without community participation. So we have to follow certain steps to reduce global warming. Steps to reduce global warming. Stop deforestation and start afforestation. Use unleaded petrol instead of leaded petrol in vehicles. Use CNG instead of petrol and diesel. Use bag filter or electronic precipitators in chimneys to reduce industrial pollution. Choose clean power instead of fossil fuel. Use biogas instead of wood, charcoal or coal. Whenever possible, join a carpool or take mass transit. Reduce greenhouse gas emission in atmosphere. Look for energy star on electrical appliances to save energy. Use CFL lamps to reduce energy consumption. Avoid unnecessary energy or fuel consumption. So now we reach to our destination. That is end of today's discussion. Let us recapitulate what we have learned so far. A gradual increase in Earth's average ground and atmospheric temperature across the whole planet is known as global warming. Greenhouse gases and hyperhuman developmental activities are responsible for global warming. But it has several positive impacts such as it will increase fresh water availability, increase the agricultural productivity, increase the hydroelectricity potentiality, increase ecosystem productivity. Navigation is possible in frozen areas, but it has several negative impacts such as sea level will rise, grain production will be reduced, deserts will increase, chances of disasters will be more, animal and plant species may be wiped out. So to control global warming, Indian government implemented the Bharat norms for motorized vehicles to control vehicular pollution. On an international level, Rio Summit, Montreal Protocol, Kyoto Protocol, Johannesburg Summit and several other summits and meetings are organized from time to time by various countries to reduce greenhouse gas emission and global warming at their own level by various methods. Now we reach the end of today's topic. Before we wind up the lesson, here's a quick test for you to find out how much you have actually absorbed. Question, which gas contributes more as greenhouse gas? The answer is carbon dioxide. Question, which group of gases are responsible for global warming? Answer, greenhouse gases. Question, due to global warming, which region will experience decreased rainfall? The answer is Mediterranean region. Question, by which passage, shipping routes between Europe and Asia will cut down by 9,000 kilometers? Answer is Northwest Passage. Question, Montreal Protocol was held in which country? Answer, Canada. Question, which summit was held in South Africa? Answer is Johannesburg Summit. Question, Kyoto Protocol was held in which country? Answer, Japan. Next question, which summit was held in Brazil? 
answer Rio summit. Question, which summit is also known as Earth summit? Answer is Rio summit. Question, the Central Pollution Control Board CPCB was established in which year? Answer is September 1974. I am confident that you have all scored well. I hope you enjoyed the lesson as much as I did and are looking forward to the next class. Thank you for your attention and see you next time.